Over here, we have something called a mapping diagram. And what it does is it takes an input value and maps it onto an output value. So over here, as you can see, the output value is two times the input value. So one times two is two, two times four, two is four, etc. So we can say that in this diagram, X or the input value is mapped onto 2x or 2 times the input value. So there are three main types of mapping and they are 1-1, one, one, many-1, one, and 1-many. Now the way to read this or to interpret the names of uh, the different types of mapping is that it basically compares the ratio of the number of inputs to the number of outputs. So that means that for one input in one one there is one output for many inputs in many one there is only one output and for one input in one many there are many outputs so in order to understand the concept of mapping better let's look at a few graphs over here we have the graph of y is equal to 2x or of x is mapped to 2x now looking at this graph if we take a random input or x value, we see that we receive only one output or y value. We also see that for every single output value, we receive only one x or input value. So therefore the ratio of output to input or input to output values is one is to one, therefore making this one one mapping. Let's look at the graph of y is equal to x squared. So for this graph we similarly see that for each individual input or x value we receive only one output or y value. However for each individual output value we receive two input values. So for each value of y there are two possible values for x. Now, and we know that for the graph y is equal to x squared that this is true because 2 squared is the same thing as negative 2 squared. So we could call this input value 2 and this input value negative 2 and they both give us a single output value of 4. So we can say that this graph is a many 1 graph because for many or multiple input values, we receive one output value. Now let's look at the graph of y is equal to the positive or negative under root of x. Over here, we see that for each individual input value, we receive two output or y values. And for each output or y value, we receive only one input value. Therefore, we can say that this graph shows one many mapping because for each one or individual input value, we receive many or two output values. Okay, so another important concept in within mapping is understanding what types of mapping can be used to describe functions. Now let's revisit the definition of a function. So a function is a rule or expression that for each single input it produces only one output. That is when you input a single value into the function you should receive only one value. Now let's look back at our graphs to determine which types of mapping can be used to describe functions. Now, if we look at 1, 1 mapping, we see that for each input value, we receive only one output value. And therefore, 1, 1 mapping can be used to describe functions. If we look at many 1 functions, we also see that for each input value, we receive only one output value. Therefore, many 1 functions can, or many 1 mapping can also be used to describe functions. 
However, when we look at one many functions, we see that for each individual or for each one input value, we receive two output values. And since that is not consistent with our definition of functions, one many mapping cannot be used to describe functions.